So have you ever started on an electrical project and you found that the job that should have only taken probably like five to 10 minutes at most is now going to take a little bit longer because of what you found inside is either not to code, it's unsafe, or it's just going to cause a massive headache. Well, I have set up here what is probably one of the most common issues that people run across when they go to change out a receptacle or a light switch. I'm gonna show you some really quick and super easy ways in order to remedy this situation to make sure that it's to code, it's safe, and then if you ever wanna do anything in the future in that box to make sure that it's easily worked on. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. It is in fact that I can't pull this receptacle out any further than this, which means that someone before me at some point cut the wires that are coming into this box too short. So let's go ahead and remove this receptacle so we can get a better look at things. And before doing any electrical work, you wanna make sure that the power is shut off, which you saw I did earlier. I would be willing to bet that the vast majority of people that are watching this video have probably cut their wires too short. And that could just be, I mean, it could be laziness, but it could also be just not knowing the code. So let's go ahead and jump into the code book and see exactly what it says as far as what should be here. So according to the NEC 300.14, which is titled Length of Free Conductors at Outlets, Junctions, and Switch Points, it states that at least 150 millimeters or six inches of free conductor measured from the point in the box where it emerges from its raceway or cable sheath shall be left at each outlet, junction, and switch point for splices or the connection of luminaries or devices. Where the opening to an outlet, junction, or switch point is less than 200 millimeters or eight inches, in any dimension, each conductor shall be long enough to extend at least 75 millimeters or three inches outside of the opening. So what that's saying is if you see this yellow sheathing that's in here in the back of the box, this is where the measurement starts from. So you need to have at least six inches measuring from where this wiring is exiting from this sheathing out the front of the box. And then in addition to that, the wiring needs to extend out past the edge of the box at least three inches. So from where the wiring exits the sheathing, we have approximately two and a half to three inches of wiring. And then extending out past the edge of the box, we are at approximately three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna show you a few fixes that are quick, easy, less expensive, and most importantly, still code compliant. So the first thing that I would want to try is to see if I've got any slack in this wiring. Now, most of the time when this wiring is installed, it is stapled in such a way that there won't be any slack. However, in other areas and certain countries, they will have what is called a service loop, which is a loop of wiring that's in behind the wall that you have slack basically that you can then pull from and then therefore extending your wires in the box but you can always give it a try, give it a little bit of tug, and maybe you can get at least that much more extra to come out before having to go to the next possible fix. All right, so since I was not able to pull much extra wiring out, I still am not code compliant here. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to extend these wires. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different methods in order to do that. All right, so in order to make all this happen, I'm gonna need some pigtails. Now what I wanna do is I need to have my copper straight. They've got these hooks on them currently from the receptacle that was removed from here. So I'm just gonna remove each one of these hooks. Strip off some more insulation on each of the conductors. And I'm gonna start off by connecting the ground pigtail to the ground wire that's coming out of the box. And I put my ground wires up together and once those two grounds are together, then I will take my lineman pliers and I will pre-twist these wires. So then once I get done pre-twisting, I'll cut off the top of the wires and I'll put on top of it one of these ideal tan wire nuts. Now, if you are one that likes to use wire nuts, I would really recommend picking up some of these tan wire nuts as they're very versatile, can handle a wide range of sizes and numbers of wire. And they've been proven time and time again to have a very strong hold on the wires. So now I'll do the same thing with my white neutral wire. I'll take my white neutral wire pigtail, put it up next to the white neutral wire coming out of the box, pre-twist it together, and then put a wire nut in on top. And I'll do the exact same thing that I did with the other wires. Pre-twist my black pigtail with the black wire coming out of the box. And then once that's done, put a wire nut in on top. 
All right, so now that all my wires have been extended, now I'm gonna get a measurement of how long the wires are from where they exit the sheathing in the box. And as you can see, we have at least six inches. We're actually coming close to seven inches. And we have to have at least three inches extending out past the edge of the box. And as you can see, we have at least three and we're a little bit over four. Now this is a great way of doing it, but I'm about to show you a way that I think might be a little bit better as it won't take up as much room in the box and won't require as much wire. Many of you are probably by now aware of this device right here. This is the Wago 221, but I've moved on to a different device that I think works a whole lot better in this particular circumstance. Hey, really quickly, if you're finding this information to be of shockingly good value, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. It really does help the video out to spread out to other people and hopefully be able to help them out with this as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. And that's this device right here. This is also a Wago 221, but this is an inline connector. It's basically like your old butt joints, but in this case, it's a mechanical connection. And the way that these works are much like the original 221. You've got a port on each side. You've got your levers on each side. And then just like the original 221, once you insert the wire into the device, you make sure that it's seated correctly and you just flip down that lever and now it's locked into place. But what some of you may not know about these devices is that the levers themselves do not necessarily have to be in the up position in order to insert your wire. You can actually, it takes a little bit more force, but you can actually just push it in and it also will lock it into place. All right, so in order to extend this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my ground wire. I got my pigtail here. I got my inline connector. I'm gonna take my pigtail. I'm gonna insert it into my inline connector. You can see through the plastic there to make sure that it's seated correctly. And then once it's seated correctly onto that, then I'm just going to then connect it to my ground wire that's coming out of the box. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with my neutral. I'm gonna insert that into the inline connector and then connect it to the neutral wire coming out of the box. And so now last but not least, I'll take my black pigtail. I'll insert it into the connector and now I will connect it to the black wire coming out of the box. Give it a good pull and it's all connected. All right, so now that all those are connected, now I'll measure from where the wiring is coming out of the sheathing and I've got at least eight inches. If I measure out past the edge of the box, as you can see, I clearly have more than three inches extending out past the edge of the box at any point on this box. And of course, it would also be very common for there to be more wires in this in a box. But if that's the case, it's really not an issue as again, this one can accommodate up to three wires. And they also have this one here that can accommodate up to five wires. I'll have links down in the description down below where you can find all of this. At this point, this is ready to be tucked into the box and connected to a receptacle or switch or whatever's going in this box. So one thing that I have found that is super controversial about what I did in this video is the splicing devices. And if you wanna get some more information about this as far as what I found and what I found from talking to electricians in the field, as far as what they think about the different splicing devices, I'll post a video right up here that touches on all of that. And I'll also include a video down here that if you wanna find out how I go about splicing everything together, I go in depth in that video. So I hope that you found this video to be helpful. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below and of course if you have any questions or comments you can leave those down in the comment section and i'll catch you all in the next one see ya